morning all, it's post bag. And uh, first up we have three dollars worth of electronic parts. Come out. Ugh, I'll have to cut this one. Hmm, touch me. Two touch me's in fact. And what these are is touch sensitive USB plug-in light modules with some LEDs. And I think they're variable brightness. So let's give them a try. So there it is plugged into a power bank. Switch the power bank on and the light comes on. Touch the sensor and double touch, press and hold, nothing. So it's quite bright and uh, there are two, well there's a, a little chip there and a transistor here. And if I touch the chip, I can get the LEDs to go off. The chip's quite hot actually. But it doesn't seem to do anything if I touch the touchpad. Now I'm just wondering whether there's so much noise uh, on the output of this power bank that it's confusing the circuitry, which would which would be bad really, because uh, most or a lot of five volt USB outputs are going to be noisy. But that's not working at all. Nothing. And now interestingly, I've just tried the second one and that's working as an on off switch. That's working fine. Double click doesn't do anything. Press and hold doesn't do, do anything. I thought these were variable brightness, but they don't appear to be because press and hold does absolutely nothing. So have I been sent a dud? I'd be surprised because these are from Alice. So these were on eBay. Uh, there's the item there, there's Alice. And it is two pieces, USB touch light module, warm white bulb, light to LED USB and all the rest of it. And they were uh, $3.40, so that's two pounds and six P, free postage. And there's Alice one one oh nineteen eighty three. So definitely one doesn't work. And the other one does work. Well they're quite neat. Bit uh, annoyed that uh, I've been sent a dud. Okay. And uh, next we have a nice neat little box and it's called Probe. Let's have a go at opening this. This might take a while. So I might do it in two parts. Yeah, this is going to take a while. And uh, so this is a pulse oximeter and it's from Contec Medical Systems Co. Limited. Now I've had this on my eBay watch list for quite a while and I've just been eventually tempted to uh, get one in but not particularly because I'm bothered about my pulse or heart rate or anything like that oh that's quite nice a little bag but I'm intrigued by the display on this thing it's an OLED and I'm gonna have to get some uh, batteries to power this thing up it takes two uh, AAAs so I'll just get some cells. Right, let's see if this thing's happy with a couple of inner loops. Oh yeah, version 2.6, finger out. Now look at that. This is a full, well, oh, bye-bye. This is a full color OLED. Okay, so what you do is you stick your finger in there Press the button, press and hold the button, version 2.6. Look, I'm alive. 97, I think I'm just going to run around the garden. There it is. It's actually quite nice and sunny today. Right, here we go. Okay, I'll go in and check my pulse. 
Right, two laps of the garden, and I've got a heart rate of 140, and that's coming down. Now the other number on the right is blood oxygen level, I think, 93. Right, let's get my breath back and uh, see what we get. Uh, right, I've managed to uh, remove the front cover, so now you can see the full colour OLED, and it's really, really nice. I mean, you can't buy these full colour OLEDs uh, anywhere other than in this pulse meter. So that's why I bought it. But um, it must have, well, I think it's got two transmitter LEDs and either one or possibly two sensors to detect uh, the pulse and the, what's that, percentage SP oxygen, whatever that means. There's a little chip down by the switch which says HC00. It can't be a 74 HC00, can it? Now inside, um, in the bottom of the unit where the batteries are, you can just make out what looks like some sort of uh, photo detector. It looks like a photo diode because it looks like there's only two wires going to it. I suppose it could be a transistor with no base connection. And then there's a emitter up there and if I press the button Did that come on? And wait for a bit. You can see it starts sending out pulses of red light. So that's obviously the LED emitter. Now I got this on eBay. Uh, there it is. It's the pulse oximeter, finger pulse blood oxygen SpO2 monitor OLED. Now it says it's a CMS 50D1. But it actually isn't a CMS 50D1. Let's just look at the price. $12.50, that's £7.57. Now there was some postage, uh, $4.60, £2.79. So it came to about just under £10, I think it was. I got this one from Yang M T one So as I say, this isn't a CMS 50D1. It's a CMS 50C. And that got me looking around for the other variants of this thing. So here, look, Medical Care for You are selling the CMS 50B on the left with the monochrome LCD, the CMS 50L in the middle with the red LEDs, and the CMS 50C, which I assume stands for colour, which is the colour OLED uh, version that uh, that I bought. That's really uh, got the collector instinct in me going. And then there is the CMS 50D, and it appears to be with the two-color OLED, those OLEDs that are sort of mostly blue but with uh, a couple of lines of yellow. So this company have been through all the display options. They must know a lot about driving various different display types. Fascinating devices. Okay, so now we have electronics, $3.00. And this is the little LiPo fuel gauge module that uses the MAX 17043. So this is the LiPo fuel gauge module based on the MAX 17043 chip. It's that tiny chip, uh, two millimeters by three millimeters it is. And you can barely make out the name or the number on it, even in low tech macro mode. Um, now this is the module that I already have, I have one of these, on my LiPo battery stack for my wearables project. So if you have your microcontroller read the I squared C lines, uh, SDA and SCL on this module, then you can on your display, uh, display both the remaining battery percentage, so this is currently at 40.5%, and the battery voltage, and those two parameters are in two registers inside the 17043. Now I bought this for two reasons really. One, on the original stack, I've kind of got this wrong. I assumed that the sensible thing to do would be to connect the LiPo into this two-pin socket. But what that means is that even when the uh, protection components on this charger board, the TP4056 charger board, when they open circuit and take the battery out of circuit, it's still powering the MAX 17043. Now, I'm pretty sure that the current draw on this is very, very tiny, but it does mean that it is possible that this LiPo could be fully discharged 
if you left it for a long time. And that's not really right. So I want to rewire this so the LiPo wires to just the charger board so that it's completely taken out of circuit when its voltage drops too low. And then I'll probably use this two pin connector to actually run over to the microcontroller. And uh, the second reason I bought another one is because on eBay, uh, this item is actually now a bit cheaper than when I bought the first one. So this is new LiPo fuel gauge battery detection alarm module, uh, I should say Max 17043 in there somewhere, yes it does. And this is now £2.38, but there is 99p postage, so what's that, £3.37. And that came from Lakey X 101 Now quite a few people did say to me, why are you bothering with this module when you could just measure the battery voltage on an ADC pin and then do some sort of rough calculation uh, of state of charge remaining from voltage. Well, you can, but the Max 17043 actually has a very sophisticated algorithm. And uh, ever since I've been using this thing, it's astonishingly accurate. And all it's doing is monitoring voltage. So it must have a very clever way of determining state of charge from voltage. And I think at this new lower price, it's well worth putting this in and just having the chip do all the hard work for you. Why bother to write loads of code when this thing's got the algorithm built in? So there we are. That is today's post bag. Bye bye.